The left and right hand sides of the exterior human form are essentially mirror images of each other. Of all mammals, birds, reptiles, invertebrates, amphibians, fish and other animals, over 99% appear symmetrical with respect to left and right, and some appear more symmetrical still. One of the few animals that defies mirror symmetry is the garden snail. Almost every individual has a shell that coils to the snail's right, like this. A small number have a shell that coils to the left instead. According to some estimates, the odds of finding one of these so-called lefties rather than a righty could be literally one in a million. The reasons for this are not yet fully understood and could give us a better understanding of ourselves. One left-coiling garden snail in particular recently found itself in the slime light. This is the story of Jeremy, the lefty snail. I'm Angus Davison, I'm an evolutionary geneticist at the University of Nottingham. One of the things I'm interested in is understanding chirality or asymmetry in the bodies of organisms. One Friday night I got an email from a, a retired scientist at the Natural History Museum in London and he said, you know Angus, I, I know you're interested in these snails. I found a lefty snail, a left coiling garden snail at the bottom of my garden. Would you be interested in this snail? Or you know, perhaps I'll just put it in the freezer, you know, for someone else. You know, so at that point I furiously was typing, saying, no, please don't put it in the, in the freezer. I would love to receive the snail. And if we want to understand the genetics of why it's so rare, we need it alive rather than in the freezer. Dr. Davison and his team needed Jeremy to produce offspring. Garden snails are hermaphrodites and have asymmetrical reproductive organs. It was unlikely that Jeremy would mate with a righty, Kind of like a lock and key kind of thing, they're in the wrong position. Another lefty was needed. So with the press office of the university, we decided essentially to put out a campaign to try to find a mate for the snail. Amazingly, about three to four weeks later, I began to hear reports almost simultaneously of another lefty snail in Ipswich, and also one in New Yorker. Two completely different uh, sort persons had found them. One actually is a snail enthusiast. She likes to keep snails just for fun. She likes them as pets. The other one is a, is a snail farmer and a snail restaurateur in, in Spain. He reckons he has two million snails at any one time and he'd found one of them which coiled the other way. So you know that really does illustrate how rare they are. Are lefties and righties different species? In my opinion they're not. They're not different species. They have difficulty mating, which in some people's eyes would define them as separate species. But actually we have found through genetic studies that quite rarely they can actually mate. It's just we haven't got time in the lab to wait for that to happen. We had Jeremy in the lab and we were very lucky. We received these two other potential mates for Jeremy in the post. We kind of put them together and actually initially in the first few months, Jeremy was I hardly dare say it, but it was very sluggish, you know, so Jeremy didn't move around very much and I was concerned for Jeremy's health. And so as a strategy, I actually put Jeremy in the fridge for a few months, so essentially to hibernate Jeremy, in the hope that when Jeremy came out of hibernation, uh, Jeremy would be full of, full of energy and full of vigour, you know, and would do what we needed him or her to do. And that kind of happened. So we brought them out of hibernation. But curiously, the two snails we brought in to mate with Jeremy ended up mating with each other, and Jeremy was kind of left on the, on the shelf. As the scientists involved, I, didn't, I actually didn't care, you know, because all I wanted to do was the science, and the fact that we'd found three lefty snails and managed to get two of them to mate and produce offspring was already a great advance. They were showing my family around the lab one day, and actually found at that point Jeremy mating with Tomiyu. They mated three times in all and then Tomiyu laid some eggs. 
finally we'd actually managed to get Jeremy to reproduce. Snails are not the only animals with apparent left-right asymmetry. An adult flatfish has both eyes on one side of its body and its other side faces the seabed. The upper and lower mandibles of a mature crossbill's beak are curved in opposite directions. The asymmetry of the beak helps the bird remove seeds from pine cones. Most narwhals have a lone tusk protruding from their upper left jaw. The tusk was once sold as unicorn horn and has left-handed helical grooves. Consequently, many old depictions of unicorns show the horn with the same left-handed helicity. In one of Leonardo da Vinci's notebooks, a unicorn is depicted with a right helical horn instead. A deliberate inversion, perhaps, to match Leonardo's mirrored writing. The Portuguese man of war has a sail that tilts from right to left in some individuals and left to right in others. These distinct mirror image sails are pushed in opposite directions by the wind, reducing the risk of all specimens being simultaneously washed ashore. The dinosaur Stegosaurus grew an asymmetrical arrangement of plates, with many of the plates showing marked asymmetry individually. such as this black sponge, have no semblance of symmetry whatsoever. An animal with a symmetrical exterior form can still have an asymmetrical appearance. The fire salamander is a clear example of an animal with asymmetrical patterning. It's likely that this patterning helps to break up the outline of the animal in the eyes of potential predators. Some types of animal asymmetry are invisible to the human eye. Look at the adult fig eater beetle through 3D cinema glasses and it will appear as usual through one lens, but blackened through the other. Light reflected from the beetle is circularly polarised with a left-handed twist for most specimens. The possible evolutionary advantages of this subtle asymmetry are not clear. When we found Jeremy, Jeremy was an adult snail. You can't really tell the age easily. And these snails, I think, probably live about anywhere between two to five years. I was concerned that Jeremy wouldn't live that much longer, so that was, there was a bit, of, a bit of urgency trying to get Jeremy to mate. When we finally got offspring, that was fantastic. And as the scientist, at that point, I should have put Jeremy straight in the freezer. Because, you know, if we want to understand the genetics of the inheritance of the chirality, we need, that, we need to have their DNA. And actually, I was influenced by, I was, at the same time, I was thinking, yeah, but what will the public think when they find out this evil scientist has frozen Jeremy, you know? And so I put it, uh, with the, the eggs hatched on the Friday. Normally I would go and check them all on a Monday, and for some reason I didn't that week, and I didn't check until Wednesday, and by that point Jeremy had been dead for a few days. So this is Jeremy's shell. So Jeremy's body is still in the minus 80 freezer that we have here, and I hope that one day we'll be able to do something with the, the DNA of that. It's nice to keep this as a memento of the story, uh, but if you have any suggestions about what we can do with Jeremy, I'll happily take them. I actually continue to be amazed by kind of the celebrity status of Jeremy the snail, so it really did take off. We kind of have two ballads written about Jeremy and Snail, limericks, there are books, there's all kinds of things. We've had a person who's had a tattoo on their arm of Jeremy the Snail. Fortunately, I can say they are left pointing snails on their arm. Was Jeremy a mutant? 
So if there's a mutation which makes the difference between left and right coiling snails, then that would be inherited and we can trace that through several generations. But just sometimes during early development, things just happen to be in the wrong place and you end up making a mirror image. Just pure chance. I think on probability, Jeremy doesn't have an inherited condition because we found one snail coiling left. Another snail farmer in Spain found four of them in one go. In that population, it's most likely that the condition is an inherited condition. They're all from the same farm, they're all from the same batch. There's a good chance there's a gene in there, a version of a gene which determines those differences in coiling. So to be able to breed from those snails, I think gives the most chance of us being able to use the breeding to follow the genes, to try and work out what the genetic differences are between them. The symmetrical appearance of the exterior human form is somewhat of an illusion. Our internal organs and their arrangement are strikingly asymmetrical. Most people have their heart, spleen, stomach and pancreas on their left-hand side and their liver, gallbladder and appendix on their right. Around 1 in 10,000 people has a mirrored anatomy or situs inversus, including entertainer Enrique Iglesias, entertainer Catherine O'Hara and Donny Osmond. One explanation for the prevalence of bilateral symmetry is that most animals encounter no consistent preference for left or right in their environment. An exterior form with mirror symmetry is therefore optimal. So all of the offspring that we have found so far are right coiling snails. That's actually more or less what we'd expect. Chirality of snail shells is inherited in a curious way which is called maternal inheritance. And the best way I can think to describe that is to think about a bird's egg. The egg colour is dependent on the mother rather than coming from the offspring. So it's kind of there's a delay in the expression of the mother's genes that are expressed in the offspring rather than herself. And so in the same way in snails, there's kind of a generational delay. So what we're going to have to do actually is not just look at the direction of call of the offspring, but we actually need to look in their offspring and actually maybe the generation beyond that as well. General public might say, you know, why should the government be funding that? It's, it tells us actually something interesting about our own bodies. A couple of years ago, we found one of the genes in the snails, which makes them coil one way or the other. That same gene is also in our cells, and it seems to be involved in determining the left and right side of your body. Yes, of course, we've got to have a left and a right, but why is left always left and right always right, or nearly always, you know? Why is the heart nearly always on the left-hand side? How is that signaling so consistent? And why does it even matter that it's consistent? You know, we could be half, half of us could have a heart, heart on this side and half on the other, and there's nothing wrong with that as long as the other organs are also a mirror image. And, you know, at the moment we simply don't know the answer, and it's by working on genetic studies of humans, of mice, but also evolutionary very distant animals like snails that we can really begin to understand whether there's any kind of common themes or molecules that emerge in, in determining the left and right side of the body. There's a very high incidence of snails fighting knights with swords in, in uh, the 13th and 14th century. I'm not really sure why it's there. It's really weird. 